What's poppin' gamers? It is me, Leon. A little while back, I posted a 7 quick tips video for a steampunk build, which you can check out right here. In the video, I included a design for a small airship that I really liked, and it seems like you guys did too. That video ended up doing very well as far as my non-shorts go. So, I figured that I'd make a step-by-step -step tutorial on building your own. Let's cut the chit-chat and get right into it. First things first, we're gonna need to make some balloons. Now the original steampunk airship design had five different balloons on it, one large oval shaped one and four other small circular ones supporting the other parts of the airship, but really you can have as many or as few balloons as you want. That's the nice thing about this airship design, it is very flexible with what you decorate it with. You could do one massive balloon or many smaller balloons like I did, it's really up to you. It's gonna look good either way, so why don't we start with the initial large balloon balloon design. Here I've got a vague outline of the main balloon. You can see that in the middle we have this large section which follows this pattern right here as you can see. And this section is 11 blocks long and then we kind of shrink everything in by one layer. So it becomes 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1 like that. And we continue for another 4 blocks, shrink again by another layer, do another 2 blocks, and then we now shrink everyone except these outermost walls right here by another one block, continue for another two blocks, and then we cap off the end with this plus pattern like, like so. Of course, this is all going to be mirrored on the other side, so I'm going to go ahead and do just that, and I'll catch back up with you shortly. Alright, I've got both sides of the airship done now. As you can see, we've completed this long oval boy right here. Uh, the gist of it is that to break up the wool, we're going to be using some white concrete powder, and then afterwards I'm going to bring in some wooden clamps and support structures for these different balloons. Now. Of course, concrete powder falls, so it's a little bit difficult to work with. You might end up only really placing some on the sides like so, but I believe that concrete powder is definitely the best choice here because of course there are plenty of other, you know, white decorating blocks, but those don't really have the same kind of look as concrete powder. You know, you've got things like calcite, diorite, bone blocks, but the thing is, uh, those don't really have the same kind of like soft, powdery, like less dense and hard vibe that we want for a balloon. You know, it's not realistic to have a balloon be made out of rocks or metal or bone or whatever. You want something a little bit more light and a little bit more textured, which is where concrete powder comes in. Of course, it's powder. It's not light and fluffy like wool, but in my opinion, it's close enough to create a really cool effect and break up these endless monotonous seas of white wool that we have on our balloon canvas here. Alrighty, I finished the detailing and you can see I've also gone ahead and added these three dark oak wood supports, uh, or rather like anchors uh, is a better word, around this balloon. And so I wanted something that contrasts really well with the white of the wool and the concrete powder and provides some realism. Of course, you know, you could just have like a chain or a fence just coming down from the side of the airship, but that's not entirely realistic. And one of the things that I love about the steampunk aesthetic and the subculture is that you have these big pieces of machinery that with these like big pieces of wood and metal that are used as like clamps and supports and, and things feel very weighted and grounded in reality in some aspects. Some aspects of steampunk just completely you know flip physics the bird entirely but that's another matter. I've gone ahead and done this style right where I use stairs, trap doors, and full blocks in this sort of pattern right here. If I switch to spectator mode you can probably see that a little better and as I move downwards you can see that it creates this nice ring effect and it's you know it's minecraft we can't exactly create a perfect circle here but it's the closest thing you're going to get to a circle and i think this encapsulates and circles around the airship pretty well so you can see there's one here and there's another one on the same position on the other side and then there's a slightly larger one right here in the middle so next up i'm going to go ahead and add in the final details and touches on this big balloon and then we'll start talking about the support balloons 
Okay, you can see here that I've added these little bits of wood on the top. And uh, what these are going to be for is these are going to hold the chains that then in turn hold up the balloons that are going to go above this one. So, you know, just a simple combination of dark oak stairs and slabs, a deep slate wall, and this is so going to sort of serve like, uh, you know, like a metal anchoring device which sticks into the wood. And you'll also notice that I've added a little bit of detail onto this balloon with these quartz slabs. Now, I know I'm breaking my rule rules a little bit about not adding any rock or metal or like dense solid blocks on this balloon, but in my opinion the extra little bit of depth and roundness that you get from those quartz stairs really goes a long way to make the balloon seem a little bit less blocky. And because I use them so sparingly, I'm willing to give myself a pass. Alrighty, so there's these two chains up here, which I have just gone ahead and added, which is going to allow us to build our balloons on top of them. I know this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but you can see I use a combination of chains and iron bars here to give ourselves a little bit of texture variation. And they're going to go straight up because they are being pulled up by these two circular smaller balloons that we're going to place up there. Another thing I neglected to mention earlier is that I've also added some support structures down here at the bottom, and this is just a combination of stairs, slabs, and trapdoors going across like so, and more chains drooping downwards which is eventually going to connect to the main body of the airship. But we're not there yet. So first things first, let's knock these other two circular balloons out of the way. Balloons are in place, so there's eventually going to be two more of these, one right there and one right there. But, so these are just the topmost balloons, and you can see I've connected them like so to the tops of these chains from before. And they follow a very spherical pattern in the way that it starts off with this cross section down here expands outwards by one layer, expands outwards by one layer, goes up two more layers, and you can see I've already detailed it with white concrete, so you don't have to watch me do that again. It expands inwards by one layer, expands inwards by one layer, and here we end up with the 3x3 three three cross pattern, just like we did before at the bottom, and just like with the larger airship balloon down there. Next up, I'm gonna add my wooden braces around these balloons, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the other two balloons down below. Let's go for it. Alrighty, two more balloons established. You can see I've actually rotated them 90 degrees compared to the ones I made up above, just to, you know, vary things a little bit. I don't want everything kind of all facing the same dimension here, so breaking things up like that with the wooden stuff going around this way and around that way, it, you know, it helps to break things up a little bit. So these are positioned off to the side and down from the top two balloons, much closer to the main balloon. Now this only really matters if you're following my design to a T. Of course, if you're implementing some different balloon shapes and different balloon positions, and uh, it's not going to matter as much. But if you're following along with me, then make sure to remember that these are actually quite close to the end of the airship here. You don't want them to touch, but they should be pretty close. With all five balloons in place, the chains anchoring everything together, and the support beams already holding them tight, we are ready to start on the hull. All right, we've started the hull. Now, as you can see, I'm using acacia wood just like I did in the actual seven quick tips video. In my opinion, it's not my favorite wood, but I think it actually looks really nice in this build. Something about the bright orange color contrasts really well and makes a nice three color color palette with the brown of the dark oak and the white of the wool. So about the construction of this hull, uh, I start here, right directly lined up with this center ring of this large balloon. And as you can see, I've got the chains descending down here. And what I do is I go one, two, three, four blocks out, and then I build out a seven block thing of wood right here. So three on either side. And then I go down where I have the stripped log, stair, stripped log, stair, stripped log, stair, all the way down, repeating one, two, three, four times and ending with a stripped log line down here like so. So I take the same seven block pattern and I bring it back one. Of course, this is gonna be the back of the ship and the front of the ship up there, which we'll get to in a minute, but I shift everything down by one block. So you see where there's a piece of stripped log, there's a stripped log in one and down one. Where there's a stair, there's now a stair in one and down one. And you follow the same pattern for another seven blocks towards the back of the ship, continuing on with this bottom layer here. You kind of have to double up on the acacia wood here, but that is totally fine. You go and then you actually expand outwards again. I feel like having this back bit and this sort of midsection bit adds a nice little bit of depth 
to the back of the ship and it doesn't just kind of make it one solid straight line going all the way back. Maybe it's not entirely realistic, but then again, what is about steampunk? So and this is actually only going to be five blocks though. See, one, two, three, four, five. And of course it follows the same stair wood, stair wood, stair wood pattern all the way down. Now, of course, everything you see here is going to be mirrored on the other side. Moving on to the front of the ship, I move everything in by one, but this time, instead of a seven block wide section here, I only do five blocks because this is going to gently curve inwards towards a central point. So you can see five blocks in, up and in, another one, go another three blocks. So now we're here and we are just past the outermost or the outer ring of this main balloon right here. And then this is where the pattern gets a little funky because I have this sort of custom design gentle swooping pattern that goes in and I really don't know a good way to describe this. So I think I'm just going to let you take a good gander at it and to see if you can commit to memory that pattern of stairs and wood. What you do here is up to you. Going in for a little bit of detail, of course, I like to bring these half slabs in and sort of create this up, down, up, down, up, down pattern, kind of like almost like a medieval fortress or barracks of some kind. The pattern gets a little messed up over here, but then it continues toward the front of the ship. And eventually we make our way all the way to the front where it's this, there's this little wood slab poking out like so. Anyways, I'm going to go and finish the other side of this hull as well as the detailings. Uh, there's quite a bit of detailing that I haven't done yet on this, on this hull and uh, I'll bring you guys back in when that's finished. See ya. Alrighty, I have finished both sides of the hull and I've also included some of the hull details. So let's take a look. Right over here, you can see that I have finished both sides of the hull, including this little bit on the back here and going all the way up to the front. So the hull is now pretty much complete. But let's take a look at the details before we go on to anything else. I've included these things right here, which is an acacia trap door in front of some chisel deep slate. And in my opinion, this looks a bit like a hole in the side of a wooden hull for like a cannon or something sort of other piece of weapon weaponry to poke out of so of course they can be open or they can be closed really uh you know whatever floats your boat anyways <laughs> i've also added some of these acacia signs here for just a little bit of texture variety it's a way to sort of join these two different sections of acacia planks and especially from a distance it definitely makes things look a little bit more cohesive and have some depth i've also added these chains and iron bars along the bottom these can pretty much be sprinkled wherever you want i didn't really do them in any sort of fashion or like any sort of pattern to them. Uh, these are really just whatever you want them to be. Uh, I kind of see them as anchors or you know metal chains that stuck the ship to the ground when it was at you know on the ground uh, but now they're kind of just dangling beneath as the ship flies. Really whatever you want to do with them. Uh, I've also gone ahead and added this cool circular window here. If you're a regular on this channel you'll know that I love this circular window pattern with stairs and trapdoors. And of course behind Behind it, I've got the new 1.17 tinted glass. This is one of my new favorite blocks. It's honestly really, really cool. I love the shading effect you get when looking inside, and of course it complements this steampunk industrial design super, super well. So of course I've done all of these uh, detailings on the other side of the ship as well. Moving on to the top of the hull, I haven't done the deck or the interior yet. We'll be getting to that shortly. But I've added this little pattern of anvils, chains, anvils, chains, anvils, and chains to break up the side of the hull here, make it look a little bit more like some sort of castle wall or like a rough pirate ship sort of style wall. I don't really know. As with a lot of things in life, I don't have a plan. I just think it looks cool. Anyways, that's it for the hull and the hull details. Next up is the deck and the interior. Let's get cracking on that. Alright, the deck and other details are finished. Let's go over what I've done. So, first things first, I have overlaid the deck on top here. You can see this covers the entirety of the hull. And what I did is I took a bunch of campfires and just laid them down and put them all out with the shovel. If you take a lit campfire and right click with the shovel, you end up with this put out campfire texture, which is amazing with spruce wood, spruce trapdoors, logs, in this case dark oak logs, but just 
different kinds of these low saturated brown colors. It's gonna look amazing, especially in the like a deck of a ship or some sort of old weathered wooden floor design. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I've done that and I've sprinkled in spruce half slabs. Generally, I put them towards the outsides here and I put more campfires towards the inside. Now, of course, I like to splatter them around in all sorts of weird, funky patterns and designs. But you know, this is really up to you how you want to decorate random disorder organized design so maybe the ship is older and more weathered but you know if you're making like a brand new ship or you want to make something a little more clean maybe you throw in some pattern to it entirely up to you the next thing i did was i grounded these chains here Ooh, the sun's in my eyes uh, i grounded these chains here in more of these supports with the deep slate and the wood and the iron bars laid out in a design like so to kind of really anchor them into the deck like these things are supported and secured and grounded in the deck and that's very important i went ahead and added some barrels and other various decor because you know gotta have storage of course so i just kind of throw in some barrels trap doors rails whatever design you know so much of minecraft building is just putting stuff down wherever you feel like and just continually trying that until it looks good. I added this sort of captain's quarters, wheel, helmsman area. It's a little raised platform above the ship where if you were like the ship's captain, you would like steer from here, you know, you control the wheel and navigate the ship across the skies or whatever. Uh, we're gonna get to the interior in a little bit with the captain's quarters down there and the main generator furnace-y sort of thing down there. And last but not least, of course, I added in some more campfires underneath the deck here. Now, as I said before, this ship is like old, rusty and weathered and a little bit beat up so you know some things are gonna be on fire some things are gonna be smoking you can really just like find a spot throw down a campfire put a slab on top and there you go instant decoration beautiful that's about it for the deck and all of the finalized details on the deck. You can see I've, you know, sprinkled around a couple other things, but that is the gist of it. And last up is the interior. So let's get cracking on that. Alrighty, last up on our list is the interior. And this airship is a little small, so it's only really got two interior rooms. But you know, the interior isn't the main focus of this build, so I think it's okay. First up on our list is the steampunky, furnacey boiler room. This is the bigger of the two, and it's really just here to be like a powerhouse industrial engine. Uh, so we've got this design with like coal blocks and blackstone walls, a sort of like a supply of coal that's like spilling out of the wall there. We've got some lava in a cauldron, we've got a blast furnace, and we've lined the entire thing with the new copper blocks. Now you can see it kind of butts up against the tinted glass from earlier, but you know, we're gonna ignore that. Combine this with the wooden ceiling, which is actually part of the deck, and some lanterns, and you've got a really nice vibe going on here, and I absolutely love it. This sort of aesthetic is really cool, and you know, you take a step back, you climb up the staircase. Let's take a look at the other interior room, which is the captain's quarters. So that'll be right down here if you flip up those two trap doors pass behind this banner you can take a look at the captain's quarters now this is gonna be a heck of a lot nicer we've got this little back wall here with some bookshelves some lanterns for light and we've kind of encased the entire room in a little bit more acacia wood like we don't really want to feel like we're in the hall of a ship here we want to feel slightly more at home slightly more inviting and because of that i've also added this section back here where you've got the bed plants foliage lighting and just other stuff to make it feel a little bit more homely you know like what the actual decor items you put in here is really up to you i think this sort of vibe fits well for like a little brief refuge of green and nature in an otherwise very cold and industrial airship so we've got this nice plant design that i love which is two leaves of any kind on top of a composter and this mossy azalea plant design which i love even more admittedly i didn't come up with this one but it's a moss block on top of a azalea inside a potted plant and it is so cute like look at this thing adorable anyways coming around here we've got some lightning rods for that little bit of steampunky flare trap door over the other side of that cannon block and that's pretty much it for the captain's quarters you're really just trying to create a more warm inviting environment that's still going to be quite cramped don't get me wrong there's not very much interior space on this airship if you can create sort of a nice homely warm chill atmosphere i think you're doing something really well here there we go, your steampunk airship is done. Let's take a big step back and admire our handiwork.
This is actually my first time making a non-scripted video, so I really want to hear your feedback. If you could, please leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Also, let me know what kind of build you'd like to see me cover next. I know this video ran on extremely long, but that's just how it is when you're making unscripted content. Until next time gamers, this has been Leon, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Peace.